Are you a woodworker in distress? Okay, so this is part three in my distress paint finishing tutorial series, and I'm going to do the varnish on these end tables today. And first, I want to go over some tips and techniques and products that I use for varnishing. And I'm going to compile a playlist of previous finishing related videos so that you can get a refresher on some of the things I've covered before, like how to make your own flat varnish from common varnishes. And it's a very useful tip. And basically, I let the product settle in the can and then separate the top layer into a container and label it. And then pour the bottom layer into another container, and that is the flat varnish. And it works both with water-based and oil-based products. I'm going to be using both today. The water-based product is ideal for colors that are creamy or white color because the yellowing of the oil polyurethane is significant. So, but I'm going to use that on the top coat varnish on the butternut tops. And you can see the separated layers in the oil-based product. This has been on the shelf for a while. So the sheen of the varnish is determined by a microcrystalline material that is what you're seeing settling on the bottom there. So the first step in the varnishing phase is to clean the surface of the paint from the distressing. There's lots of crust and crud that is left on the surface and that has to be scraped off in order to uh, get a good varnish. So it's kind of a finicky step. I use these Baco scrapers, very good scrapers, and I keep two. One is sharp, uh, the other is dull and kind of beat up, and I find that the dull one works the best. So I pretty much cover all the area at least once. It just takes one swipe. Um, and then I go over the edges with the gray scrubby pad. But it's a finicky step, but necessary. And then I clean the workbenches and make sure all those little paint crusts are away from the uh, finishing process. So after that's done and clean, uh, I'll select the brush that I need. Here's a quick recommendation on varnishing brushes. I only recommend Purdy. A lot of professionals will say the same thing. Generally, hand painting is just too labor intensive to use a brush of lesser quality. The Purdy brushes are well put together, they last a long time, and the quality of the bristles is really the big factor. Um, so don't even bother with other brushes. It's really not going to save you any money. And Purdy makes two brushes. One is called Dale and the other is called Glide. The Glide is thicker, better for general purpose painting, base coats, and it has more bristles. The Dale versions are skinnier, they have skinnier handles too, and less bristles. These work better for varnishing and top coats. And I have these sizes that I use. I'll probably pick the two and a half inch size for this piece. You don't want to pick a brush that's too large, um, then it's more difficult to control. So those are the brushes I recommend. And I cut the handles uh, almost all the time. I cut them right at the R <laughs> to give the right length. And that's to get into tight spaces because the handles are too long for painting in confined areas. So that's how I use my brushes. So for applying the varnish, I'm going to roll it on like I did with the other products and then brush it out to make it even. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can brush the varnish straight from the can, but it's, uh, it's good to get it on quick, especially with the water-based product because it dries fast. It actually makes it easier and I get better results with the rolling and brushing combination. However, you do need to keep in mind that you will get some fuzz from the roller cover 
And I only recommend the Purdy White Dove 3 8 Snap. It's the only product that I've used that is tolerable. And I cut them in half. I'm not even going to tell you how I do it because it's kind of dangerous. But that's what I use for roller covers and for applying varnishes over a distress paint finish. The fuzz from the cover is not really an issue. On light colors like this, it's almost impossible to notice. But for applying top coats to tabletop surfaces that are smooth like this, the fuzz from the roller cover will be noticeable and you'll be able to feel it with your hand. So I don't recommend rolling for top coats on tabletops. Uh, just brush it on straight. You'll get better results that way. For the drawers, I'm going to apply a coat of wax on the inside and outside of the drawer, the bottoms of the drawer, and then on the drawer runners inside the enclosure here. And I just use a clear paste wax, bowling alley wax, called uh, by the Boston something company. Um, that's the wax I use. It's clear wax. just had a comment come in about the glaze, so I'm just going to do a quick test to show you the effects on the samples. However, this is another product, no longer made. Martha Stewart did her thing at Home Depot for a brief time. Um, and this product you mix with paint to give the color you want. So I think this is the base coat color mixed with five or six parts of the glaze. So it goes on with a brush and then you wipe it down with a rag. It's a very brief window of time to work with it and uh, I'll just show this real quick.
that's what the glaze does. It's kind of a dark pigment to use on white. I probably want to dilute this with a little bit more of the glaze. But as you can see, it does change the color quite a bit. So for natural finishes, it's always sanding in between coats. This is the third coat and final top coat and the second time sanding. So I'm using 220 grit for the final sand. For the first sand, I use 180 grit because the grain raises up quite a bit after the first coat and requires a bit more sanding. This is a light sanding. and. I go over the corners and edges with the gray scrubby and then it's done. So 
it's good to filter out your varnishes, especially if it's a partially used container. There's a lot of crust that builds up around the container and gets in the finish as you pour it back in. So it's always good to filter. These are screens that uh, fit right over the gallon containers, but they are pretty versatile. So.
So the finishing is complete on the end tables and I just want to show the results of these test samples. So on this sample I did it without the antiquing glaze and clear coat varnish which is what I did on the end tables. And this sample is clear coat on the right and polyurethane flat varnish on the left so you can see the effect that the yellowing of the polyurethane has on the color which in some cases might add to make a desirable effect but in most cases you don't want to change the color and most people don't like the yellowing and the yellowing will actually increase over time with UV exposure and on this sample I did the antiquing glaze and it was kind of a dark glaze for the color so it changed it quite a bit and so I did the glaze with the clear varnish here and the glaze with the polyurethane so you can see after that process it's almost a completely different color I wouldn't even call it white and it's important to note that the crackle will actually react with the water-based varnish a little bit it adds a tiny bit of glimmer to the top coat and I do recommend two coats. I did two coats on this section right here so you can see it's a little bit more flat and even. So over here I have some other faux finishing antiquing glazes and these are actually better products. They're made by Ralph Lauren. Home Depot used to sell this stuff for like 24 bucks a gallon. It was pretty cheap stuff but now it's a special order item much more expensive plus shipping and the difference with this product is that it comes pre-mixed you don't have to measure anything and uh, you know it's workable straight out of the can and I get three different shades this one is called tobacco AG04 I use it for dark colors this one is called smoke AG03 and this is AG02 tea stained and it's a much lighter glaze and this is the color that I would use to go over white to just add a little bit of an, an effect but if you want to control the glazing effect better I recommend the eggshell finish as opposed to getting flat the flat is just very pasty and rough and it soaks up more of the glaze product and it will have more of a darkening effect the uh, eggshell has a tiny bit of resin in it that adds a little bit more smoothness and it doesn't soak up the glaze color quite as aggressively. So those are some quick tips about glazing. I'll do a demonstration when I come to it, but uh, that's my process for uh, antiquing paint there. So i got to put these tops on. The butternut tops are complete. It turned out pretty well, nice and smooth. And I waxed the drawers, and I just have to finish fitting the drawers, put on the knobs, and grease the tracks a little bit, and they'll be good to go. So, there we go.